The new 2019 version of the Acer Nitro 5 looks like a decent gaming laptop, but how does it compare against the older 2018 model from last year? Let's compare the two and see what the differences are, help you decide which one you should get, and find out if it's worth upgrading from the older model. First, let's cover the differences in specs between the two units I'm testing with. The older 2018 model has an 8th gen Intel i7-8750H CPU, while the newer 2019 model has the 9th gen i7-9750H CPU. The older model has a GTX 1060, while the newer one has a GTX 1660Ti. Both laptops came to me in single channel, however I've installed the same 16GB dual channel kit in both for testing. As for storage, the old model has a 256GB M.2 SATA SSD, while the new one has a 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD, but storage options will vary. They both also have a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS screen, and while both of mine have a 60Hz panel, I believe you can buy it with 144Hz too. Both laptops have a gigabit Ethernet port, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 5. Both laptops are available with different specs though. You can find examples and updated prices linked in the description. This should be a good comparison though, as we've got the top end config from 2018 compared against 2019's highest spec option. So basically, we're comparing the best Nitro from last year against this year's best. On top, both have plastic lids. The older 2018 model has this sort of carbon fiber texture over the whole thing, while the newer 2019 model is mostly smooth with a grooved triangular pattern on the sides. Inside, both are black, though the older 2018 model has a carbon fiber sort of pattern on it. However, it's not textured like the lid, just smooth. The newer model is all matte black and looks a little cleaner. And both have plenty of red accenting. The build quality of both seemed fine for machines mostly made of plastic. I'd have a hard time picking one over the other in that regard. The new model is also a fair bit lighter, both by itself, and when combined with the 180W power bricks and cables for charging, it's around 260 grams less. As for size differences, the newer 2019 model is noticeably smaller in every dimension, and this allows it to have significantly thinner screen bezels compared to the old, chunkier design of the older 2018 version. The screen in the new model was better in most ways. It had both a higher colour gamut and was brighter, while the contrast ratio was just slightly higher from the older 2018 model. Both of my Nitro 5s have the 60Hz screen, so expect different results from the 144Hz option. In terms of backlight bleed, there was a little more with the newer 2019 model. Or at least it was just a bit more patchy. But I had no problems with either during normal use, and this will vary between laptop and panel anyway. Both had some screen flex, however there was a little more from the newer 2019 model, despite both having similarly thick lids. Both laptops have the 720p camera above the screen. This is what the webcam and audio look and sound like on the older model, and this is what it looks like and sounds like with the newer version of the Nitro 5. The keyboards look quite similar. Both have red accenting around the WASD keys, while the new 2019 one also extends this to the arrow keys. The left and right arrow keys in the new model are slightly wider, and the new one also has a dedicated shortcut button to open the NitroSense software above the numpad. Both versions only have red backlighting. With the old model, you can only turn the light on or off, while the new version lets you adjust between four levels of brightness. Though both do light up all secondary key functions, but the new one was definitely brighter. In terms of typing, I preferred the newer model. The key presses were just a little more tactile feeling. Here's how both sound to give you an idea of what to expect. Both models have precision touchpads, however the one in the newer one is much better. The new one is basically normal and works well, no issues with it. But the old one requires a harder press and first clicks down at two different levels. The first one doesn't trigger a click until you push more and I just found it annoying to use. In terms of flex while pushing down hard, the older ones seemed a little sturdier. But I had no problem with either during normal use. They felt solid enough for plastic machines. Let's check I.O. I've got the old Nitro 5 on the bottom and the new one on top. On the left, both have a Kensington lock, gigabit ethernet port, HDMI 2.0 output, USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, no Thunderbolt, and one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A port on the old one, while the new one has two but is missing the SD card slot that the old one has. On the right, both have a 3.5mm audio combo jack and power input, though the newer model on top has this closer to the front due to the inclusion of an air exhaust vent. The old one has two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, while the new one has one. 
So to summarize, the I.O. is quite similar. Both have three USB Type-A ports. The old one has one 3.1 and two 2.0, while the new one flips this to two 3.1 and one 2.0 port. Otherwise the older model has that SD card slot which I would have liked to have seen on the new one. On the back we've got the older model on the bottom again, and we can see the older one just has solid plastic on the right side while the newer one has more ventilation. Meanwhile on the front, both are just plastic. The new one has a textured pattern though. Underneath, both have similar amounts of air intakes towards the back. The older model allows you to easily remove covers to access the memory and 2.5 inch drive bay with one screw each. So it's much easier to access compared to taking off the whole panel which is the only option with the new model. Both panels can be removed with a Phillips head screwdriver. The new model had far less screws and was also easy to open. The panel was just easy to take off, plus with the old model you need to unscrew the 2.5 inch drive as it's screwed into the bottom panel and plugged into the motherboard. Inside we can see the cooling designs are a little different. The new model also exhausts air out of the side, otherwise they seem the same. The old model also has one M.2 slot, while the new one has two, and both have two memory slots and a single 2.5 inch drive bay. The battery in the older model takes up more space physically, however it's a smaller 48 watt hour battery compared to the larger 58 watt hour battery found in the new model. Both were tested with the screen at 50% brightness, keyboard lighting off and background apps disabled. While just streaming YouTube videos, the new model lasted 21% longer. And both were using Optimus. While playing The Witcher 3 with Nvidia's battery boost capping frame rate to 30 FPS, there was much less of a difference between the two. The older model actually lasted a couple of minutes longer despite having a smaller battery, which makes me think that while under the same workload, the 1660 Ti requires more power than the 1060. Now let's take a look at thermals. Both laptops were tested in an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, so these results should be apples to apples. I've only tested combined CPU and GPU stress test, so with the Heaven GPU benchmark at max settings running at the same time as the ADA64 CPU stress test with stress CPU only checked. Neither of these machines performed any overclocking or undervolting out of the box with the latest BIOS versions and NitroSense software installed. Under this combined CPU and GPU load, we'll first look at the CPU temperatures, as there was too much data for one graph. I've got the older 2018 model shown by the red bars and the newer 2019 model shown by the purple bars. Basically in every instance the new model was cooler. While the 2019 model was thermal throttling with the fans on auto speed at 92 degrees celsius, simply raising fan speed was enough to remove this. The 2018 model was meanwhile constantly thermal throttling even while undervolted and with a cooling pad, yikes. These are the GPU temperatures for the same combined CPU and GPU workload, so the CPU was also fully utilised during this test as a worst case. Interestingly this time around, the GPU was a bit cooler in the older model, and was actually thermal throttling in the newer one with the fans at default speed. This would be because the GTX 1060 in the older model was averaging around a 75 watt TDP, while the newer GTX 1660 Ti was hitting its 80 watt power limit, and more power equals more heat. These are the clock speeds for this CPU of each machine while under these same combined CPU and GPU workloads. The older Nitro 5 was actually slightly ahead while both machines had the fans at stock speeds. However in all other tests, the newer model with 9750H was around 100MHz faster on average over all 6 cores. While thermal throttling was an issue in all cases for the older Nitro 5, power limit throttling becomes a limitation for the new model once we boost fan speed. These are the GPU clock speeds when under these same combined CPU and GPU stress tests. With the fans at stock speed, again the 2019 model was behind due to the thermal throttling present on the GPU. With adequate fan speed though, it pulls ahead in the rest of the tests. Though these are different architectures, so clock speed isn't the best comparison for performance. But we'll look at some games shortly. Here's what we're looking at in terms of Cinebench R20 scores from both machines. In single core, the 2019 model is winning as expected. The single core turbo boost speed of the 9750H is 4.5GHz, compared to 4.1GHz with the 8750H in the 2018 model. The multi-core results are very interesting. I expected the 9750H in the newer 2019 model to come out ahead. Both machines were hitting the same 45 watt power limit during this test and they've got the same 56 watt PL2 limit for the first 28 seconds too. However the older one was consistently ahead in this test. I'm honestly not sure why, perhaps my 9750H just lost the silicon lottery and needs more power. As for the areas where you'll actually be putting your hands, under combined CPU and GPU stress test with the fans at default speed both were quite warm to the touch in the mid 50s. The newer one was just a little hotter. 
As for the fan noise produced by these laptops, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. When under the same stress test with the fan at default, the newer 2019 model was running a little quieter. With the fans at max speed, the newer model gets a fair bit louder though, which may explain why we saw this high level of fan speed lower the temperatures more than the old one. I think it's beneficial to have the fans able to go faster in the newer model, as Acer allow you to manually control the fan speed of the two fans through the NitroSense software in both machines, meaning you have the choice at what level you run them, so the newer one is just giving you a larger range to choose from, and I believe it's better to have more choice than not. Next, let's compare some games. I've tested both laptops with all Windows updates applied and the same Nvidia drivers. Both laptops also had the fans at max speed to try and minimize the thermal throttling identified earlier. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with max settings using the built-in benchmark, and I've got the newer 2019 Nitro 5 shown by the top bar and the older 2018 model below it. In this test, even the 1% low was above the average FPS from the older version, while average FPS was 33% higher. Battlefield 5 was tested at ultra settings, and again the 1% low from the newer model was above even the average FPS from the older model, while the average frame rate was 31% higher with the new 2019 version. Battlefield 1 saw a similar result, however there was a slightly higher 34% boost to average FPS with the new 2019 model. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark at highest settings, and the newer Nitro 5 was scoring 40% higher average FPS in this test. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature at epic settings, and I used the exact same replay on both machines. This is another one where the 1% low from the newer machine was close to the average from the older one, and the new one was getting 34% higher average frame rates. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and there was a 21% improvement to average FPS in this test with the new 2019 model. Metro Exodus was also tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and there was a 33% increase to average FPS with the new Nitro. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark with all settings maxed out, and this one saw one of the lowest differences out of all games tested, with a 22% higher average frame rate from the 2019 model. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and there was a nice 37% improvement to average FPS in this test while the 1% low from the new Nitro 5 was beating the averages from the old one. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane with ultra settings, and as a game that tends to favour CPU power, it saw the lowest difference out of all games tested, with just 15% higher average FPS. Overwatch was tested in the practice range maxed out at epic settings, and there was a 28% higher average frame rate coming out of the newer model. Doom was tested using Vulcan at ultra settings, and this game saw one of the biggest improvements with the newer Nitro 5, with a 42% improvement to average FPS. Strange Brigade is another title that was tested using Vulcan, this time with the built-in benchmark but still at ultra settings, and there was a large 44% boost to average FPS with the new 2019 model. Watch Dogs 2 was on the lower side in terms of improvement out of the games covered, but still a fair 22% increase to average FPS with the new model. Ghost Recon Wildlands was tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and saw a 29% increase to average FPS on the newer model. The Witcher 3 saw the biggest difference out of all games tested, with a 48% higher average frame rate at ultra settings with the new Nitro 5 when compared to the old one. On average over all 16 games tested, the newer 2019 model of the Acer Nitro 5 was around 32% faster than the older 2018 model in terms of average FPS at the highest setting preset. As we can see, it really varies by game though, however this is still a pretty massive performance improvement from a single generation. I've also got the scores from 3 d Mark Firestrike and Time Spy benchmarks. With the newer 2019 model, we're getting a 28% higher score in Firestrike and 45% higher in Time Spy. I've tested storage with Crystal Disk Mark, however results will vary with different drive sizes and models may vary by region too. The M.2 drive in the old model was SATA and also 256GB, while the newer model was double the size and also NVMe, so quite a bit faster. The old model also has the SD slot, which performed pretty well compared to others. For updated pricing, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time. It's difficult for me to compare these in US prices, as I can't currently find the 1660 Ti configuration available there. Here in Australia though, the new 1660 Ti model is going for 1900 Australian dollars, which is around 1150 US dollars without our taxes. 
I can't find many instances of the 1060 model for sale here, but it seems to be around 300 Australian dollars less, or around 970 US dollars, which is about 180 US dollars cheaper. Simply put, it's around 19% more money here to pick up the newer model. Honestly, this seems worth it just looking at the gaming performance improvements. 19% more money for an on average 32% increase to average FPS sounds okay to me. And that's before we factor in all the other improvements, so let's recap what those are. Overall, the new 2019 model of the Acer Nitro 5 has some nice improvements when compared to the older 2018 model. It's better in most aspects. The 2019 model is smaller in every dimension, giving it less chunky screen bezels, it weighs less, and performs noticeably better in games. The screen quality is better, so everything just looks nicer with the newer version. And for the most part, the newer one also had better battery life. The new model has slightly upgraded cooling with an additional air exhaust vent on the side, and it's also got room for two M.2 slots, whereas the older model just has the one. The older model does, however, let you more conveniently access the 2.5 inch drive bay and memory slots without having to remove the whole bottom panel. I wouldn't let this be a major factor in deciding. The new one is still easy enough to open up, you just have to take out more screws. And how often would you need to get in anyway? The old one has an SD card slot, which I'm personally a fan of. It would have been great to have this in the new one, but I can see why they removed it from a machine targeted towards gamers. In terms of temperatures, the newer Nitro 5 did run cooler, well at least on the CPU. Both hit thermal throttling out of the box, however raising the fan speed with the new one was enough to remove this, while the older one continued thermal throttling even with the cooling pad while undervolted. Despite this though, for some reason the older i7-8750H was consistently beating the newer i7-9750H in the newer model in Cinebench. Though I'm not really sure why, as both had the same power limit and there were no thermal limitations during these tests. The newer Nitro 5 ran slightly quieter with the fans at stock speed, however it did get louder at maximum. I look at this as a good thing though, rather than a negative. It just means you have more range to adjust the fans to set them how you like. The touchpad difference alone would be enough for me to get the new Nitro 5. The old one is just so much worse comparing them side by side. The keyboard was also a little nicer to type with on the new model. The key presses were a bit more tactile feeling and the lighting could be adjusted better and gets brighter. If you've currently got the 2018 Nitro 5, is it worth the upgrade? Generally, I don't recommend upgrading a laptop between a single generation, as there's usually not that many improvements. But if you're feeling limited in games and want to take things to the next level, the 1660 Ti is certainly delivering that performance. Despite this though, I think the older one is still a very capable machine. If I had one, I'd probably hold onto it for now. If you're buying today, I personally believe it's worth paying the extra for the newer Nitro 5. There are plenty of improvements, however for the right price, the older Nitro 5 is still offering a great gaming experience. So with all of that in mind, let me know which one you'd go for and why down in the comments. The older but cheaper 2018 version of the Nitro 5, or newer improved model. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future comparisons and tech videos like this one.